Hi all, my name is Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today I'm here with a pretty special Tiller Mechanic Altivar 58 frequency inverter. The special part about this is the dust safe enclosure, which means that the heatsink with the airflow to that is actually sealed out from the electronics inside this cabinet. So it is a rather special unit. I have actually not seen this before. Usually we would just install the frequency inverters in larger cabinets or in separate rooms as the contaminated environments. But this is actually built to be mounted in a dusty and contaminated environment. At the back and the bottom of the cabinet we have the air intake down here. And then at the top we have the exhaust and I am not particularly sure what the new cost price of a cabinet and a 10 kilowatt frequency inverter like this is. But I assure you it is not cheap when you buy it with a stock special cabinet. So here at the front we have a large disconnector. We have what seems to be a manual speed dial on a potentiometer. Uh, some kind of uh, on off button. Auto seems to be missing and then there is of course access to the normal control panel of the frequency drive. So let's see what's inside. So here at the inside we can see that the potentiometer is actually not connected and it seems to be a pretty bare bone uh, unit that all the plastic parts that you would normally see around this unit is gone. And we have a input choke for power factor correction. There is a fan here because this cabinet is of course sealed from the environment around it. But you still have some heat in the electronics itself that is not connected to the heat sink. But that is simply just circulated around the drive here. And somehow they uh, pretty much aim for using the whole cabinet as a heat sink for the regular electronics. It is a pretty standard build that we have the three-phased input on the terminals out here. We have some wires going through a ferrite core. We have some normal LC filtering over here with a three-phased common noise choke. And we have a MKP capacitor for each phase as well. Now it seems that we have a maybe PFC front end controlled rectifier over here where we have three gate drives and that seems to be a module sitting just underneath here whereas we have the larger IDPT module for the motor drive itself up under this black plate which is a Simicron Skeep module which means it's not solder in but it is press fitted up against the PCB on the back side. We also have a rectifier or rectifier sitting over here between these two screws at the bottom and we have the large DC bulk capacitance sitting over here, which is two Aerovox 1500 microfarads at 450 volt DC. Now the whole um, control circuitry sits up here at the front panel. So it's actually just a small part of this PCB that is the front panel. The rest of this is actually the whole gate drive and microcontroller. As we can see, we have only the gate drive logic sitting down here at the the bottom main board. There is no driving circuitry or microcontroller on the main board itself, so everything is handled up here. Taking a peek in from the other side, we can see we do actually have a contactor sitting here, which is a model with yeah, normal screw terminals, but it's actually soldered down to the PCB. So that is a kind of special model because it's quite funny that it is the regular model with the screw terminals at top, but Apparently there is a version where you can solder it directly to the PCB. And next to it we have what appears to be two large power resistors. And I'm kind of wondering if these are braking resistors, but they do seem kind of small for that. But there is no uh, other breaker, braking resistor mounted inside the cabinet. So that could have been mounted externally to just get rid of that heat outside of the enclosure. Here we can also notice the large, nice large copper bus that comes over from the electrolytic capacitor bank over here that it is actually laminated. So you have a very low inductance design that goes down here with one, um, that would be the negative rail. 
But then again, we both have negative and positive rail going over here as well. Which makes me think that up here we have a brake chopper, where it can simply reverse the motor energy back into the DC bulk capacitance when breaking down. So this is the terminal connection for that. So one last thing, let's see if it runs. I'm not sure how noisy the fan is, but uh, I hooked up three phases supply to it, three times 400 volt AC. So let's see how it roars. Okay, so it seems like it actually have an internal fan down in the heatsink somewhere. That could actually be. Yeah, it does actually have a fan built inside the whole tunnel here for the uh, heatsink that we saw, that it just sits in the middle, that the heatsink is actually split. It. We could also hear that from the... That's really noisy. So if we just try to unplug this one... Could be fun to see... Seems to be this fan. So if we unplug that, then we can actually hear the heatsink that's inside the tunnel and not being disturbed by the internal one. And here it just says output frequency 0 0.7 Hz, green LED, no fault messages, seems good to go. I hope you enjoyed the teardown and the rundown of this pretty special variable frequency drive unit, a Telemechanic Altivar 58. Not uh, the newest of units, so there is a whole newer series called the 71 series of the Altivar. And also now it is no longer a Telemechanic. Uh, that company was bought up by Snyder Electric. So if you need to find these or spare parts for these today, it is Snyder Electric that you have to buy them from. So until next time, tell my friends about me, get them to subscribe to my channel because it's awesome. So until next time, see ya.